everyone and good evening. Um, welcome to Craftbox TV again and it's so good to have your company. Um, and what we're going to be doing today, we are going to be doing a uh, resin casting. It is a bit of a repeat from last week, but the reason why I wanted to do this again is A, because I wanted to have it on Craftbox TV, but the other thing is I wanted to have the show in high uh, resolution uh, HD so that you can see exactly what is happening on the screen uh, unlike the video we did last week so please um, bear with me but um, but before we go any further what I did forget to do is forget I forgot to introduce myself my name is Anna Hersom I'm, I'm the founder of uh, Crashbox and you can see uh, my details at the bottom of the screen so I hope you enjoy the show and I'm going to change the cameras and we're going to talk a little bit about the resin uh, and uh, what you can do with it Okay, so now that we have an overhead camera um, available, I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the keyboard away, and I'm going to start talking to you about um, what uh, resin is and uh, what you can do with it. Um, so there will be ty two types of resin that that will actually touch on uh, today. Um, the first one is going to be uh, the ice resin. The ice resin is a clear. Uh, resin, a jewelry grade resin uh, that is a doming resin as, as as well and I'm going to show you and explain what that means in just a second and another resin uh, that um, you can use or we will be using today um, is the resin by uh, Polytech I believe um, you can you please go ahead and um, go to their website is uh, mbfg.co.uk we are not going to be stocking this resin on the craft box website so um by all means if you want to get some of that please um go ahead and visit their website um this resin is a fast casting resin it casts white and it dries white rather um it is very quick casting resin um it will dry within the space of um just a few minutes or it will cure within the space of just a few minutes it does get quite warm whilst it's curing um so um that you may want to consider that as well so that's that um and the the molds we're going to be using today are molds by prima or iron iron orchid design I'm going to be using specifically this keyhole um, of mold, but I may also use some other ones. Um, and I wanted to just do a quick view, quick uh, run through the molds that um, Iron Orchid Designs slash Prima have released um, in the last um, few weeks. Because we are getting new stock on our website, craftbox.co.uk. So if you are interested, then uh, please pop there. All links to the specific uh, molds are actually included in the description box on YouTube or right at the very bottom of the Craftbox TV page where you're actually watching if you are watching through craftbox.tv. Okay, so um, the molds I have here are the labels. And these are called, this one is called object labels one. And then we have the, oh, I don't even know how to pronounce this. But we have these. And then we have object labels, another object labels, interesting. Okay, it seems to be the same one. Um, and then we have the florals. This one's called actually Fleur. Beautiful. And then we have another mold, which is called Rustic Fleur. So you've got Fleur and Rustic Fleur. And then we have another mold, uh, which is called, I think, Nautica 2. And then we have another mold, which is called Object Labels 2. Here we go. That's the one. And then two more in the collection, um, we, this one with um, kind of longer type of designs, which is called Molding One, and another one with swirls. In fact, we may do some of those swirls. They look quite rather, rather amazing. Large flourish. So these are the molds that we are going to have on our website very soon. We are traveling at the moment um, from America to UK. And once, once they clear customs, um, I am going to be able to have them on the website. Okay, so the mold I'm going to be using is that keyhole mold. I, I am quite in love with this one, um, and I think it's rather very popular. 
as well, there are projects that I have created with this. I am going to show you one of them. And um, this one is was created this Monday, Monday this week. And if you can if you can see here, there is um there is a cast of one of those beautiful keyholes, um, and it also has some of the um, Frank Garcia uh, artisan pigments on it. Um, I will try to get the camera to zoom in. But this is how it, I hope you can see that. This is how it um, looks like. Okay, so that was the piece created on Monday. You can watch that video on Catch Up or on YouTube, however you want to watch it. I did create that piece in about half an hour. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the quick casting resin. So we will go back to our, um, to our uh, Polytech resin. And to do that, I'm going to use some of the supplies from the ice resin pack, actually, because they are incredibly handy. Um, so I am going to use a bunch of little cups, little stirring sticks. And whilst we at it, we can actually talk about some health, health and safety precautions. So firstly, when you start working with resins, you've got to remember that it is chemical. Um, and as it is with chemicals, they do have a rather unpleasant way of uh, causing different skin disorders for example um, so always be careful when you're using any type of chemicals but especially resins um, and what i would suggest is have a surface non-stick surface like for example this um, non-stick mat i've got here just be mindful that it may just get uh, ruined if, for you, if you're using it with resin quite a lot so maybe have one that you don't mind you know, dedicating for that purpose. Another thing I would always suggest is using uh, latex gloves. The reason why is just to protect your skin from all the chemicals. I'm just going to uh, put that, that on. It's like a surgery, like a doctor's surgery. I'm just going to have a quick look on our chat, what's going on. Hello, hi, hi Pam, hi Laura, <laughs> hi Sylvia, I believe that's Sylvia. Um, okay, so uh, going back, we are... I'm going just to pop those gloves on. Again, be careful, don't get any contact dermatitis or anything of this sort. Um, so I'm going to be using a measure that actually came inside of the ice resin pack. Um, and I'm going to be using uh, the quick curing mold. And the ratio, is, as you can see, this mold comes in two bottles and the ratio of it is one to one. So you need to have exactly the same amount of one and exactly the same amount of another. Um, so I am going to uh, pour just a little bit because I want to show you throughout the show also how you can color your resin and what kind of things you can add to your resin, which is quite interesting, something we did not cover last week. Okay, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of this resin. Um, you should always start with part A and then move on to part B. I might be contradicting myself. I just I tend to use it so much and, and work fairly quickly. I don't necessarily care which ones I'm working with, but normally that's how you go. You put, put part A and then part B. Okay. You've got about, with this specific resin, you have about two minutes working time and you should uh, you should mix it until it gets a bit clearer. So to start with, you'll feel a little bit of resistance um, and that's because the part A, I believe, is a bit thicker. So until those two parts will mix up, you'll feel a little bit of resistance, but then it will start getting a little bit, little bit watery. Now, normally this would this mixture would go a bit clear Mine is going to be a little milky and I will tell you why and that's a word of warning as well. I have used cup from one, um, one from part A onto part B, um, onto part B bottle and what happened is a little bit of resin has cured, that's why mine is milky, but it's still perfectly fine so I don't mind. Okay, I'm just going to put my stirrer here and I'm just going to pour that uh, mixture onto my mould. Here we go. Um, I wouldn't advise putting too much in, it will spread, so just put it in one corner and then move on to the next compartment and then see if you um, need to add a little bit more to uh, fill in any gaps. I am particularly in love with this specific keyhole, I think that's rather amazing. Okay, so I can see that some part of Little bit more 
thing to get ready because the mold is getting much thicker um, so I don't have that much time to uh, finish that off but here we go now this specific hello D <laughs> this specific um, this specific cup um, is going to turn white and I'm just going to get rid of it um, that's unfortunately what you need to do. You may want to get yourself a silicone uh, measuring cup that you will dedicate to casting your resin. Um, if you do, then it will have a longer life span, um, but you will probably have to get rid of it after about a month, really. Um, they're not the cheapest either, but it is slightly more economical uh, in the long run. Okay, so that's one thing. I'm going to let this cure for a second and we are going to move it, move to our clear resin and I will show you what you can do with that. Um, now, I'm leaving this specific resin here um, to dry so that you can see how it looks like and until I get the new cup. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Another cup uh, and then another stirrer. All right, and I'm going to use the ice resin here. And then ice resin comes in two bottles, again part A and part B. It is a clear resin, it is, it is a jewellery grade resin. Um, it does uh, cure um, clear, obviously, but it takes much longer to cure. So it takes about, it takes anything from 8 to 12 hours to cure fully. Um, so you need to be mindful of that. Um, again, as I said, it comes in part A and part B. And I'm going to be a good girl and put part A first. Part A is very thick, um, so I'm going to put maybe 50 millilitres. You need to give part A just a little bit, just a moment to let it level. Otherwise, you are likely to put too much in. And then part B, here we go. That's that. And then you need to give that a good stir. Again, to start with, this resin is going to be gone. It was going to go milky, and then when it's ready to be cast, cast to be cast, and um, when it's ready to pour, uh, it will become clearer. Um, you should mix it for about two minutes. Um, you need to be careful not to introduce too many air bubbles. Although to be fair, I have never been particularly successful with that part. So um, I tend to introduce loads of air bubbles and then just not care about it. So that's my point of view. However, the manufacturer of ice resin um, is recommending that you leave the resin to stand for a moment or two so that all the air bubbles will, um, uh, will go to the surface. Um, and it has worked for me to a degree. Um, but um, yeah, again, this is not something that this is this is not the resin I use most most frequently. The one I am using most frequently is the fast casting one, especially when I'm casting um, elements for a craft box. Okay, I'm just going to carry on mixing this. Um, two minutes. It is, not, it is now becoming a bit easier to mix because, as I said to start with, it was it was, it was a bit. Um, you get a little bit of resistance. It's like watching the paint to dry. I hope everyone enjoyed our week, our first week here at Crashbox TV. Um, I certainly have, and it was lovely to have all the guests, uh, Rosella and Lizzie. Um, so I really do hope that you liked it, um, and that we are going to have lots more shows coming your way, both this week and next week. Tomorrow at eleven o'clock, uh, we are going to be doing crafty news with all the latest releases and exciting things that are happening in the craft world. Um, and then at 11.30, I believe, we are going to be um, visiting the um, store here, local um, a base needs for you, showing you your and having a cup. And then show you how you can introduce different type of mediums and how you can colour that resin. Hi. Hi, Maria. Um, okay, so... I'm just going to pour a little bit of that resin, mixed resin, half about half of it, into another cup and take another stirrer. And I'm going to show you how you can colour your resin and what you can colour it with. The very first thing um, I tend to use, or I tend to reach for, are the dis Distress Ink um, re-inkers. They are obviously water-based, um, so 
you need to be careful about not introducing too much of wrinkles but in general all my resins have cured fine um, with that specific medium so that's a brilliant way and the wrinkles are fairly inexpensive as well so I hope that um, you may have some already in your stash another thing you may want to use are pigments so for example we have the primary element pigments by um, color art and you can add them as well now again uh, be quite careful specifically with pigments and another thing i'm going to show you which is acrylic paints so for example i've got two acrylic paints that I can add be quite careful with the ratio of these and don't ever add too much because your resin although it will it is likely to cure um it will be it will be quite soft um and uh, if you're putting your piece on a canvas or any other um any other mixed media pieces then it doesn't matter that much but if you need it to be solid for any reason then be careful with the amounts you're putting in just always just put one just one little drop um and um and that's um that's enough you don't have to be that careful with the distressing uh with inkers okay so i'm going to take these two now the bubbles are coming up and I do have quite a few, so I'm just going to wait a little bit longer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a drop of maybe two, but really two is more than enough. It's probably a bit too dark anyway. So I'm going to add two drops of the Distress Ink Reinker. And now I've got this beautiful blue colour. And I mean, can I just um just to just to say you can absolutely um buy specific um coloring agents and I believe that um ice resin maker I have now created um a range of colorants uh, for her resin which is great but you know I'm, I want to show you to, I want to show you how you can use your general your usual uh, craft supplies that you are likely to already have. Um, how you can use that for the purpose of colouring your resin. Okay, so I'm going to um, mix that just a little bit more. I'm going to take another cup and just pour a little bit more of that resin. I'm just going to leave some of it clear and then add uh, pigments, for example. So we went with blue already, so I'm going to go with brown and take the tiniest, tiniest amount maybe a little bit more and then mix that in if it's not enough we can always add more okay now that is turning into a bit of a greeny color and obviously this is a powder medium so i need to give it a good stir to make sure that it is mixed up but it may never properly dissolve because the actual um, a resin is quite thick so I'm just going to add a little bit more I really don't want to overdo it okay just pop a little bit more here okay we've got this shimmery you probably cannot see it on camera but we got this lovely shimmery effect here which will probably become even better when I um, cast it. Okay, I'll leave that to stand for just a minute. Another thing we can do, and I actually probably will use that clear resin, because why not? Everyone now knows how the clear resin looks like. Or maybe I will keep a little bit, because I am going to need a little bit. I'm just going to pour just a tiny amount and add maybe a little bit more leave that for a moment and i will add some acrylic paints now as i said you need to be specifically we need to be quite careful with acrylic paints because you shouldn't really uh, mess up the ratios too much so just add just tiny tiny droplet um and it is quite a big risk really that your your um, cast is going to be um, quite flexible but as I said it really depends what you need to do with this afterwards so this just has given me this beautiful green shimmery effect I'll try to zoom in to show you I'm not sure if that's actually focusing but it is really really pretty okay so that's how you can color that resin I'm going to take a mold and add some of those beautiful coloured resins into a mould. 
and I'm going to use this flourish and what I'm going to do I'm going to mix the um, I'm going to mix the resin in the actual mold well not mix really but I'm going to pour um, different resins in different areas so that we can have um, a really nice kind of a blendy effect so starting with blue I'm going to start where do we want this I'm going to start here oh that's absolutely beautiful gorgeous color okay and then let's take some green just adding a little bit of green here and there or rather in just one spot in one spot really I'm not particularly worried about those droplets falling um, on the other side but I'm going to clear them and then this brown or greyish type of colour in the tail of that swirl I think that will look rather nice okay and just to blend those colours I'm going to take my spatula and just add that green a little bit just to make sure that it's not like completely separate all right okay I shall show you the effect of it on some picture at a later stage okay so that's the clear resin that we were working with what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back to our opaque resin and just firstly show you how quickly it's set so you, it took about how long we've been live about 20 minutes or 15 minutes to get that uh, to get those done now you can take them out they are still a little bit pliable so what I would suggest that you're going to is that you're going to put it on a flat surface and just leave it there and um, they're not sticky anymore if you've got the ratio right they will be just fine but just let them rest they will be still a little bit warm because there is an exothermic exothermic um, reaction going on where there's quite a lot of heat produced to get this mold so so to get that cast um to get that cast cast <laughs> um and yes yeah, so i'm just going to pop them there because i want to make sure that they will stay nice and flat you can see how beautifully these come out from the mold okay and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to color um this um opaque um resin and for that i will use another cup and just do about again 15 millimeter milliliters millimeters 15 milliliters of part a 15 milliliters of part b okay and give the give it a nice mix again with this one you need to work quite quickly so don't hang about too long because as you can see this is what you're going to end up with and this one I am going to color orange so again I'm going to use my distress ink and put maybe three droplets and this is giving me kind of orangey color which is lovely actually it will look completely different. It will actually look much lighter um, when um, when the resin is cured. So I just added a, another droplet because I know it's going to be lighter. Because obviously the whole resin is going to be white. So whatever colorant you will add, you know they will just um, they will just be made a little bit lighter. Okay, and we're going to have tons of. Um, beautiful orange keyholes coming our way again just pour a little bit and wait for this to distribute itself and then just add um, wherever you're missing some then just add it then then and there okay like in this one for example I'm just going to add a tiny bit here and then I've got one more here and that should hopefully be enough maybe one more here I'm not sure we've got enough resin for that just about perfect okay lovely so that will stand for a few minutes about 50 minutes and that will be properly cured as well and as i said um it, the color is going to be much lighter 
I'm going to take the pictures of those and, and post them on our social media afterwards. But um, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this little demo and um, I will see you next time. Have a lovely evening. Bye.